should be on now. Okay, so let's begin. It's wonderful to see so many people here this morning. And um, welcome to our uh, Turing Way Book Dash share out, um, which is on the Friday of Book Dash. So we've been doing the Book Dash all week. We've had four really intense days of contribution sessions, but also some really wonderful social sessions. Can't even say that because it's too many S's. Um, and um, we uh, have which where we've had discussions on really interesting topics um, and um, we you can we'll share some of that stuff in the chat um, oh Avika said about recording I've already recorded <laughs> brilliant thanks for the reminder though um, it's always good to have that so um, we're not going to introduce ourselves because we've got there's actually 31 people actually plus here because we've got more people in the Ada Lovelace room at the Turing Institute so if you want to introduce yourself in the chat that would be really amazing um, and what I would like to do is to really start with our share outs because we've got lots and lots of share outs of all of the wonderful things that we've been doing this week in the in the book dash so I'm just going to go straight into that. I don't think I need to do any other introductions. Um, maybe I need to just introduce myself because I haven't done that so far. That's probably the thing I should have done to start off with. So hello, my name is Emma Karoon. I am a white Muslim woman wearing a multiple coloured stripy scarf, which I love stripy scarves. Um, and I have some dark rimmed glasses on. I've got a lovely image from the Turing Way book behind me, which is um, showing research infrastructure roles, which is one of my passions. I am a senior researcher at the Turing Institute and have been taking part in the Turing Way book dash this week. Um, I've been trying, I've been helping to, trying to help actually, is probably the right way, trying to help our update some of the chapters we have on research infrastructure roles um and yeah so and we've got about 31 plus people here and I think we should get started because I've talked enough and my voice is going already so I am going to pass it over to our first person on our list who is uh, my colleague at Turing another community manager Cass shall I do a descriptive introduction and yeah, it would be lovely. Yeah, that amazing. Would be Thank lovely. you. Thanks so much, everyone. My name is Kaz. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a white woman with green hair and colourful shirt on. And in my background, I've got lots of plants and animals and things because I'm the community manager for environment and sustainability. Not because, but also that's why I love my job. Um, so as Emma said, I'm a senior research community manager. Um, and what I've been working on in the book Dash is um, an update to the uh, community managers section so um i'll share my screen if that's okay and just talk you through we've got um what where it was this one so here's the community managers um bit in the research infrastructure roles and what we know is that this hasn't been updated for a little while and it's also now out of line alignment with the other research infrastructure roles as they're described so one big thing is that we refer to ourselves at Turing as research community managers and not just community managers. So that needed to be changed. And there was also no um, personal story um, for the RCMs. So we move my bits. Um, so I started with an issue and I actually start straight with the issue. I started with resyncing my old fork from 2018 and getting all of my Git in place. And then I wanted to make sure that I followed the instructions and guides are from Turing Way about how to make sure that my issue was complete. I used the edit uh, chapter template and opened with a, um, a PR straight away. And those things were like issues is something I'm totally comfortable with, but PRs and branches and all that kind of stuff is a little bit still um, a mystery to me. So I'm really grateful that there was some nice guides on how to make sure the workflow is aligned with what was expected. And also by doing that, I've been learning more about how that works well. And, and I'm pleased to be able to sort of integrate that into my own practice. So we um, drafted like a first um, edit to the to the chapter. Emma wrote a personal story and um, then went through a nice process in the uh, in the pull request of reviewing 
uh, Emma reviewed my draft and then Jessie, who had never contributed to the Turing Way and hadn't done much on Git, she was also d reviewing via GitHub as well. So lots of people learning things and lots of um, lots of contributions correctly collected and attributed. So I'm super pleased that we got a chance to sort of integrate someone new into the pipeline and also for me to sort of learn new skills on there. Um, so the... The ask is um, that Emma and I and the RCM team can continue to just finalize a few more bits that, that we can push in um, the updates as soon as possible. And then there's a question mark around whether we want more than one personal story. And if we do, how do we make that kind of manageable because they're quite long and we don't want multiple pages and we don't want to get out of step with the other personal stories as well. Um, so this is something I think we can continue to chat about in the RCM team. Um, but any kind of thoughts or ideas from folks about whether multiple personal stories is valuable and how do we incorporate them in the current structure would be very pleased to discuss. Um, any other comments from Emma? I'm not sure if Jesse's on the call as well. Thanks, I'd just say thank you to you for doing all the wrangling because that's really the hardest bit. <laughs> so thank you so much. Um, and yeah, I I apologise. I haven't quite finished my personal story. I started it and uh, it's something on my to-do list for today, actually. I'm hoping by the other share out, I can share out that I've finished it and yeah. at least it's there. So that would be a, an achievement. Um, so thanks. And well done, Cass, because that was, that was a lovely changes that we've done there. Um, and I think a good example of you don't have to start from scratch, like when you come into the book dash, you can actually update a chapter that's already there. And that's a really, really good contribution to the Turing way as well to keep things up to date. Um, so thanks so much, Cass. I, I don't think because we've got quite a lot of share outs, I don't think I'm going to open it up to your questions. But if you have got questions for Cass, uh, or I suppose all myself or Jesse, Jesse's um, here, um, put, please put them in the chat and then we can have a bit of um, replying going on in the chat because I think I think we should move forward. If that's OK with you, Cass. Is that OK? Brilliant. Oh, look, there's already one there. Um, brilliant. Thanks, Marvika. Right. Thank you so much. Did we give Cass a round of applause? I actually missed that. So let's give Cass a round of applause because we're here to give lots of applause today. So well done. Okay. And big Brilliant. shout out to Jesse as well. She nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that's another what we've done this week, actually, like between us is actually um, at, we're at different stages of using GitHub. So we've all kind of checked in with each other what we do and kind of like how we review things and kind of updated our knowledge because GitHub also change the structure of it has changed a little bit recently or over the last year so it looks a little bit different so when you go into it it's, it's like oh it's all not similar to how I used before so that's also been good the kind of collaborative working together has been very nice um right so Cass you've already got a couple of questions in the chat there oh and Jessie is here hi Jessie um and right so I think let's move on to um the next person, sorry, I'm out of it, which is Lena. Hey, hello. My hello. name is uh, yeah, Lena Karvoski. I'm a white uh, woman with uh, messy hair uh, sitting <laughs> in my yeah, sitting on my sofa in uh, in the Netherlands. I um yeah, I uh, I work as a community manager for research, data management, and uh, open science uh, at the Frau Universiteit Amsterdam. And um, unfortunately, I had a very chaotic week, so I couldn't spend as much time as the at the book dash as I would have preferred and as I yeah really like to do. But I um, I managed to collaborate with a few people. Uh, so together with Esther Plomp, we are planning um, an in-person uh, hub uh, for um, for the Netherlands uh, in the fall. So in case. Yeah, in case there are people who are interested in uh, joining, uh, please let us know because this this time we 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 really have some funding to organize something really nice uh, for for the Netherlands. So we spent some time talking on how we can do this and how we can make a nice event out of this. And um, and I also joined the group that was uh, working on um, industry and um, academia collaborations. 
so the, there is already an example in the Turing way about the collaboration between Turing and uh, Roche. But um, we think that it can be extended with other cases of, uh, of collaboration. So I guess on behalf of the group, I can ask if you know or if you took part in such a collaboration and you think it could be a good case to be added to the Turing way, please get in touch with us and that would be um, really nice. And um, yeah, I think that's that's where my contribution today ends. Thanks so much, Lena. That's lovely. I'm very excited about the Dutch hub because I know we it was it we I think it was thought about a bit late this time and the planning it's much easier to plan them when you've got a lot more time isn't it to do planning and you've got yeah, some money and, place many, and everything for many yeah. factors not, not all of them were connected <laughs> <laughs> lots of factors <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like me moving houses and uh, yeah yeah yeah, so it's really great. So just um, yeah, flagging yeah. again that there will be a, in the next book dash will be in November. So then there will be a uh, also a, a in-person hub in, in yes, the Netherlands. Yes, and uh, so. we really look forward to it. Great. Thanks so much, Lena. And uh, let's give Lena a round of applause if you haven't done that already. Well done, Lena. Thanks very much um, for being here this week. And any questions for Lena, put in the chat and we will move swiftly on. Because as Malvika has pointed out, we have 10 more people and we've only got very little time. So we're going to have a five minutes each time limit. So I'm going to actually time everyone now so that we're on time. So um, next up, we've got Aida. Hi, Aida. Hello. Um, so hi, I'm Aida. I am a white woman with um, sort of um, blonde highlight to tear, uh, sitting on my chair um, in my flat in Sarajevo, where I'm currently working kind of over the summer. But I'm flying back to London tomorrow for some in-person working next week. I work at the Turing as a senior researcher for research applications. And I'm going to show you what I've done this week. Uh, it's also been hectic for me, so it hasn't been a sort of a full time contribution, but it's always hardest to sort of start that first section and uh, start merging. And so I'm sort of proud for starting and I'm going to show you what I've done. OK, um, so I think I'm sharing. Okay, I'm just so in the Turing way, uh, I'll show you here. Can you see the, right. so in the guide for collaboration, we have a section called sustainability of open source projects. And this uh, section was started by my colleagues, Jen and Alden and Harry, uh, basically almost two years ago during the book dash. And this week, I've essentially updated some of the out so some of the uh, kind of stuff that was out of date. And I've added one more little section called examples of open source business models. This was essentially mostly been written by Jen during that uh, book dash two years ago, but we've never quite merged it. It was sort of the, the perfect being the enemy of the good. So we, I think, waited to get more references, more data. So this time I just wanted to sort of update it with uh, current data and, uh, and start merging. So that's what I've achieved. And here we have a skeleton for what we want to be building on in the future, which is sort of if you are looking at open source uh, sustainability for your projects uh, and if spinning out a business is what you're considering, there are two broad categories. One would be a community led sustainability model and the other one would be investor led sustainability model and here are some case studies. Um, so this is the skeleton of some work that we are excited to be working on, hopefully later this year also within sort of bridge AI, which is which is a project in Turing. And yeah, so it's it's a start, but um, I'm very excited that we did start. Thanks, Aida. Again, a really good example of updating and like finishing things off. Because um, often we have one, we go to one book dash and then we have to come to, but continue the work to another book dash, which is always a good, good thing to do. Thank you so much. And a round of applause for Aida. 
I will see that she's got appreciation in the chat from Jen for helping to finish off things that she'd started, which is another good thing to do. Um, so well done, Aida. And um, if you have any questions for Aida, please put them in the chat and we'll move on swiftly to our next person who is Vicky. Hello. Uh, yeah, my name is Vicky Helen. Um, I'm a research community manager at Maturing. Um, I'm a white woman with short brown hair um, and I'm sitting at my desk at home and I'm very backlit because I have a skylight in front of me um, and Cass always says I look like the Queen album cover. So I feel like that is very visual for you. Um, so I also didn't have much time during the book dash because um, I was on holiday. Um, but I got back yesterday and I had been organized and done some pre-writing. Um, so I'll just share my screen. Um, so my chapter is on ambassador schemes, um, which I actually did struggle to define in the chapter. So for me, these are those kind of schemes that are often in kind of academia and academia adjacent organizations. So kind of like fellowships. So I think a lot of people in the school have taken part in the Software Sustainability Institute Fellowship Program. Um, and there are those kind of schemes where it's often kind of early career researchers being supported by an organization. They might do a project or they might kind of travel to a conference. Um, so that's what I've been writing about. Um, so I've done a couple of chapters. So one kind of landing page kind of uh, talking about what these are. Um, I also wrote a chapter on kind of advice about establishing one of these schemes. Um, and I also then wrote a personal case study on the Turing Rush Community Scholar Scheme, which is a scheme I set up um, and is still running this year, um, which is supporting 10 students to kind of be part of the partnership and develop their own community projects. Um, so I just wanted to say also a big thank you to Emma for helping me proofread and add lots of valuable sections. Um, Zena, who I think is going to arrive in a bit in the in-person room, she helped me re-review the chapter and she's actually one of the scholars. So it was very interesting having her uh, read the chapter from the other side. Um, and also Sophie did some amazing debugging this morning um, just to get the sub-chapters right. It was such a small change. Um, so very eagle eyed. Um, I think that's everyone who helped me out with it. Um, and I also think it might be ready to merge, but I don't know if we should do a live merge. Emma's nodding. <laughs> yes, you should, because it's one of our <laughs> traditions to do some live merge. There we go. go okay. I think yeah. it looks fine. I'm going to merge it. We'll see what happens. OK, there we go. Yay! Yay! <laughs> there we go. Yeah, the 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 quirk of the Turing Way book is you can't actually go and see it for a few yeah, minutes I was say, in the live book, <laughs> it's a but we can see that it's been. Uh, oh yes, we do need a bell to ring, don't we? <laughs> ring, ring, ring. I think that used to be a tradition. We used to have a bell. Ring, 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 ring the bell. Oh, that would be cute. Um, oh, but another thing. Sorry, I just wanted to say one more thing is that if you've been part of one of these schemes, or you've run one, or even if you were just like an attendee at one, um. It would be really nice for if you wanted to contribute a case study, um, because I think they really vary a lot. Um, so yeah, thank you so yeah. much. What a good ask, yeah. So I think there's lots of people here that have done fellowship schemes or been champions of schemes or something like that. So yeah, that would be really great. Something for the next book dash, just for someone to come and do. Thanks so much, Vicky. Let's give Vicky a round of applause. You've done so much, even when you were on holiday. That's amazing. Well done. Brilliant. And if you've got any questions um, for Vicky, please put them in the chat and we will move swiftly on to Sophie, who did all the debugging. Well done, Sophie, because we looked yesterday for ages to try and find the problem. <laughs> so well done. Um, hi, everyone. Yeah, uh, so I'm Sophie, a uh, research application manager at the Turing. Uh, I'm a woman, dark hair that's kind of in a bun and some blurred greenery in the background. Um, yeah, the, the debugging to this morning was really fun, actually, because I, this is my first book dash and I had never built the Turing Way book. So this was a great opportunity for me to build it locally and, and understand how that works. And as always, these things, you know, it comes down to like a missing hashtag and, and 
that's the bug, but um, I'm glad we figured it out. So um, during this book that, as I said, it was my first one. And um, I think I felt like probably many people like a bit overwhelmed <laughs> throughout, but um, I got I got a PR, PR merch, so that was great. Um, so let me just share my screen. Um, I started, so my plan was to work on SEO improvement. Uh, okay, I'm just sharing. Yes, I think you should see it now. Um, so I, I I thought about, okay, maybe I can just do something small and, you know, um, maybe improve some keywords or some tagging or create like a guidance around how to write good keywords. But it ended up being actually me catching up with like some really interesting conversations around um, the types of tools we use for tracking website analytics for the Turing Way book. Um, that have been happening over the past year. So what I ended up uh, creating is this kind of meta issue uh, where I just kind of dumped a lot of things that could be done and tried to, to bring together some of these earlier issues and PRs that kind of um, to, to kind of track the, the development in these conversations. Um, and then I also checked out the Google Analytics that we had set up and was really overwhelmed by it. I had never used that before. And it's like a terrible tool with like a lot of different dashboard things that I didn't fully understand. So I then, um, so Mavika then triggered um, this idea that what, what would be nice to have in the Turing way is a kind of a user awareness statement where we just kind of um, transparently talk about what, what we do or try to do in terms of tracking. So, so this is uh, the PR that I ended up getting merged with all your great help thank you so much for all the support um so um yeah you can see it's already in here so it talks about kind of why we look at this type of data and then also some awareness around how we currently use google analytics but we would like to transition away from that um and so what i looked at as well is kind of try, i try to optimize the settings in google, google analytics as much as possible so that we don't like unnecessarily share data or um, um, feed into the evil Google machine <laughs> uh, more than than absolutely necessary. So that's uh, that's the issue. I also had great conversations with um, Alejandro. Um, so we're uh, thinking about. Um, so he actually um, contributed to this issue as well. Let me just scroll down. Um, uh, trying out a plausible. Um, on Jupyter Notebooks. And so share, he has some great ideas of how we could um, move to a, another tool and do this maybe in a more systematic fashion across the Turing as well. So this is a conversation we plan to take to the infrastructure uh, team meetings and continue. Um, and then also um, just the other thing I wanted to share is this issue that in the process of thinking about the tools we set up, I think um, actually Jen triggered a thought um, in a conversation where she was like, well, you know, there's a lot of information we that we could get uh, from, but would be interesting to kind of understand um, what exactly it is we want from the audience. And, and so I opened this discussion, which um, many people have already started feeding in. So thank you so much. I think after this book dish, I want to kind of um, mull over these responses a bit more and think about um, how to maybe uh, summarize them or synthesize them a bit. But th I guess that's the ask. So um, please do head over to, to this discussion section because I think uh, um, that's really important that we as a community have a discussion around what we want from the data and what we even care about in terms of findability and, and um, kind of optimizing our content. And that can then form the basis for any kind of future actions that we take. Um, all right, so I'll, I'll stop here, I think. Thanks so much, Sophie. You get, you're getting a huge amount of praise in the chat, I've noticed. And I think this is because we've had this conversation many, many times in the Turing Way meetings about how we record data, if we record data, how it happens. So this is, this is really valuable work, like for our community, I think. Um, and a really good demonstration also of the 
the types of things you can do in the Turing Way community. It doesn't have to be writing about best practices or data science. It can be actually doing something which is which is valuable like this for us, like an infrastructure thing that's really valuable for us as a project. So well done, Sophie. It's really great contribution this week. Thanks so much. And I'll definitely, um, everyone, go and write something in the issue. I think we should all write something. Um, that's great. Well done. Um, let's give um, Sophie a round of applause. And if you've got any questions for Sophie, put them in the chat. And so um, next up is um, Richard. Good morning, Richard. Hello, good morning. Um, I will share my screen. Uh, there we go, yeah. Uh, hello, um, I am uh, Richard. I am currently a disembodied voice because I am camera shy when it comes to video recordings. Um, and. Uh, I'm the um, data outputs manager for the Human Developmental Biology Initiative based near Cambridge. Um, I've been working on a couple of things during this book, Dash, uh, one of which is a, a, a short subchapter, kind of expanding on the limits of current approaches to computational reproducible uh, environments uh, in um, in the, the research um uh, in the software environments chapter, I forget exactly what the existing title is. But the main thing I'd like to have a quick talk about here in this section is uh, something I've been working on semi-independently that I hope to reference in the Turing way, uh, a side project of mine, uh, which is some checklists for research software sharing publication and, and distribution. And I'm looking for some feedback on this from, from working research software engineers and uh, working academics who publish uh, papers that have code associated with them in some fashion or, or even people who just publish code that might be used by academics um so the uh inspiration for this came from some community developed checklists for the imaging data community and i wanted to do something somewhat analogous to provide a a, a straightforward guide for people publishing uh research code but i observed that um there's a few different types of research um, code output and they need somewhat different advice so if you're a researcher you're typically publishing code which might be the record of a specific analysis you may be a data analyst but not a software engineer so you've written some scripts to do something and um, it's not necessarily something that requires ongoing maintenance per se and it might not be reused as a package but rather copied in snippets and so on so, um, but it, it, you do want that to be archival because it effectively forms part of the methods for your uh, paper. Um, and then uh, you might produce something like a web-based service, maybe a database or a dashboard. And then there are generic tools of one type or another. So a software package or a pipeline um, for analyzing, uh, say bioinformatics data where you have a pre-processing pipeline that's standard for a particular data type. And there are different places that are best to share and distribute each of these. So I've come up with sort of uh, a generic 10 point set of things that you should consider when sharing research code. Um, the, and those are uh, source control, licensing, documentation, how to make your stuff citable, what testing you've performed, any peer or code review you've done, how you want to distribute that uh, code, the environment management and the portability of that, installing on different systems and so on. Considerations of energy efficiency, most relevant perhaps to uh, computationally intensive pipelines, and then data governance, uh, not data governance, just governance of the project in general, uh, conduct and continuity of the project. Uh, so you know, uh, even just, you know, who else has access to the GitHub if you leave the lab, that kind of thing. And the goal for each of these is there's sort of multiple tiers at which you can tick them. So um, I've got sort of a bronze, silver, gold, and platinum level at which you can tick each of these boxes. And the bronze is intended to be incredibly easy to, to ma match a sort of very low bar of entry. And then uh, a steep uh, increasing difficulty curve up to platinum. So if you've uh, ticked all of these at the platinum level, then uh, uh, you're, you're probably doing something wrong uh, by being extremely over enthusiastic. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah, so that, that's my uh, my uh, uh, project for the um, the last little while. Um, and I'm I'm not quite done yet. So each of those different categories has its own checklist. Um, and there's a few of these that I need to fill out, but I'd be uh, very interested uh, in um, some uh, uh, some feedback on them. And each of these sections has some extended details that have advice specific to the type of workflow. Uh, available. The idea being that you can grab one of these MD files, add it to your repo, and tick the lists. So yeah, that's what I've been working on. Thank you. 
That looks great, Richard. We love a checklist. That's always super helpful. So this looks like really, really valuable work. So thanks so much, Richard. Um, I can see Cass has put a comment of some people that she thinks you should check in with who are doing reproducibility checklists. So um, that looks great. Um, thanks so much, Richard. Yes, and, thanks, Richard. Uh, Great. Let's give oh, a round of applause. It's already happening automatically. Well done, everybody. Um, there we go. Big round of applause. Thanks so much, Richard. Um, and um, let's move on. So if you've got any other questions, Richard, please, please put those in the chat. And next up is Jen. She's in the room, I think. Hi, can you guys hear me? It's a bit quiet. Um, this one I feel like my phone's actually right there. Hi. Is this one better? A bit better, yeah. Better? Okay, I will try to project as well. So, hi, everyone. I'm Jen. Um, I'm an Asian woman currently sitting down in a fuzzy gray sweater and um, shoulder length hair uh, and big glasses. So, today I'll share a bit about what I've been up to. Um, share my screen. So this book dash, I ended up spending um, a lot of time in a section of the Turing Way I haven't spent much time in before, and that's the community handbook, where um, there's a lot of documentation on how we do things um, and uh, ways of working within the community. So what I started with was um, from an issue Malvika raised a while back around um, approaches to inviting people to a collab cafe. So we had read in Slack about that, I think, sometime in March. So added some thoughts there. Um, and I think Zina added this yeah. image too, um, following Emma's presentation on Scriberia and adding Scriberia images into the book. So um, nice to give this chapter a bit of a facelift. And then um, the next thing I worked on was starting a chapter on the drop-in sessions, which is a type of co-working that um, a few of us have done, it's sort of like in office hours or a clinic. Um, it has different names, but is essentially a kind of um, collaboration session where there's just an open time for anyone to come in and ask questions to a team. So um, wrote a bit about that, added a Scriberia image as well. Um, and had some interesting discussions with folks on um, also the, the best way to add a case study in. In this case, we ended up um, just adding it in at the bottom um, rather than starting a new page, but um, that was partially because we didn't feel like there was a ton of additional information that needed to be shared, but um, it could be helpful just to add some links and details um, of what this kind of meeting looks like in practice. So. It was great to get that live. And then the last thing that um, isn't fully complete yet is um, I started um, a bit of maintenance on the data governance chapter for the machine learning pipeline. So this sits in the project design book. And this was following um, the social session on Tuesday. Um, and um, there's just a few changes. Um, to the chapter opening and also the main um, section um, and added a new figure, uh, which was one from that social session. Um, but I am having some issues now. Um, so for any of um, y'all who do enjoy debugging and, and taking a look at issues um, in this uh, review, it would be great to to get some thoughts on that. Um, and if anyone is interested in data governance and would like to take a look at the text, um, would be awesome also to get some nice on that. So that's that's pretty much everything. Yeah, I think that covers it. Thanks so much, Jen. You've done loads this week. Two, cha two chapters, um, well, one chapter updated, one new chapter, and then another one. So really well done. Let's give um, Jen a round of applause. Um, and uh, Jen had a couple of asks there, which I think she's also put in the um, in our document. So please do go and contribute to her data governance chapter. That is um, that is there because that's a really great one. Um, thank you so much, Jen, and thanks for the round of applause. If you've got any questions for Jen, please put them in the chat. 
And um, I think we're moving on to Jim, who's also in the room. Oh, I can see Jim. Hi, Jim. Um, yes, can you, uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, great. Uh, yes, uh, I'm Jim. I'm a recent software engineer at Turing. Um, I'm a white man in his 30s um, with not much hair left. What's that? Just cut very short. Um, and I'm in the offices, uh, same name as Jim. Um, yeah, so this book dash actually did quite a lot of small things rather than one uh, sort of one larger thing, which turned out to be quite fun actually because I, I think I got more involved with what other people were doing uh, and before I might share one thing I'm going to write just talk. Ah, there we go. Um, I think this is the thing I'm sort of most proud of. We have uh, this PR, which came out of the blue. It's a new new contributor who picked up an issue about validating the all contributors file, because sometimes that goes wrong and the table doesn't look right. Um, and so they picked that up and then wrote a script which would do that. But there were a few things we wanted to sort of tidy up and, and get this running in CI. So I went through and made some changes to improve that. And along the way, I found that uh, there's a project which has a schema like this, which will describe what a valid file looks like. And so I contributed the changes upstream there. So uh, now everyone can validate. Um, but there was already an all contributors thing there, but I, I made it better, so now everyone can do that, uh, which I was, I was quite proud of. I think I did introduce a bug, so I might go back and fix that later. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm quite proud of that. And then uh, I did other little bits of infrastructure stuff along the way, but I also spent a fair bit of time trying to review other people's PRs and fix CI issues and, and answer questions. And I had some really good discussions about open source and what that means um, when you're not talking about software um, and about analytics and, and all sorts of things. So, so that was that was really fun. Um, yeah, and I suppose I, so I think maybe what I learned is a lot of people come into a book dash and they have a plan. It's I want to make this new thing or, or write this new chapter and actually maybe joining just to get involved in what other people are doing and help people out to so be a really good way to do it as well. Thanks so much, Jim. Um, it sounds like you've had a really productive week <laughs> and I love I love your sort of upstream contribution. I think that's really great. The contributor bot is a constant nightmare for me, so I always break it when I try and use it. I think everyone else does as well. It's not just me. So thank you if that has improved that issue particularly, which I think is probably what you were doing. Um, but yeah, it's, um, I love BookDash as well for a similar reason that you come and you hear so many great things, you get involved in not what actually you came to do, but what everybody else is doing because it's more interesting maybe than your original idea or or just really interesting. Um, so thanks so much. Let's give Jim a round of applause for all your great work this week. Well done, Jim. Thank you so much. Um, and you have got an ask in there. Uh, does anyone want help with CI errors? Oh, it isn't an ask, really. You're, you're, it's kind of a, you're asking if anyone needs help with their things. So it's a very generous ask because you're asking to do something for someone. So that's a different version of an ask. So thanks, Jim. That's really great. Um, so uh, if you've got any, or if you have got an ask for Jim, put it in the chat and he's going to help you today, it sounds like. Um, maybe for people who have got problems with their PRs that they want to merge for our later share out session, that's probably a good, a good thing to do today. So our next um, person is Louisa. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> Hello. Um, I'm Louisa. I'm based in Leeds at the moment. I'm in my office. And I've been uh, working on a chapter with uh, Nora 
that is also here in the chat. I don't know if she, maybe we can just uh, <laughs> do a two for one <laughs> to save time. So, um, I will share now, if possible, on my screen. This one? Yeah, can you see? Share. We go. Yeah? Yeah, I can see that. So, um, We've been working on this chapter, uh, so uh, very kindly, um, uh, Mishka assigned us this um, task. <laughs> and uh, so I have to share that I'm not sure what to do about this. We've been working <laughs> on the template <laughs> and uh, that's all. And then I added the comment, then what do I do next? So any help with this would be great. I'm sure this has been said loads and uh, I my, my bad I missed <laughs> the steps but um, we're not sure how to proceed and how to also be added to the list of contributors for example so maybe if uh, this can be addressed later there's not there's no need to to do it now and then I can show you the chapter that I was saying is in the template <laughs> And uh, it's here, so we uh, we've defined different sections about the identification of learning needs. So we've been looking at designing the learning product with how to do some principles. We went to the we define some uh, learning persona items and some group activities, and then um, we that uh, with the company to provide and professional standards. So we split between the two of us the sections, me and Nura, and then we also added some diagrams about uh, the sections. So there's a couple of them. This is a research process diagram. So how to design effectively um, uh, educational content. So there's all these different sections. And then we, we wanted to add these for the uh, uh, empathy process. So how to keep uh, the um, learning learner perspective, let's say, in mind when you design educational content. So this was a kind of summary, uh, visually, of what to do. And uh, and that's it. And then at the end, we added a little summary. Uh, so Nura did this very nice Uberian thing. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> and then... At the end, yeah, that's the summary. So we think we we we've done. We would like to proceed with this uh, push, but um, again, very not sure. So yeah, you've done a lot of work in the week because you have not got any of that, had you? You'd you'd not even formed your idea. Remember on Monday, you you made a lot of progress just getting your ideas together just on Monday morning, didn't you? I can remember yeah. that. And yeah. uh, I have to say that uh, I particularly appreciated the setting time apart because it, mm. it is very hard when a working day just to have a focused time on something yeah. specific and this really helped. And also your system of having the breaks and having the, it really works. And also this, this kind of check-ins, you know, as it going, yeah. as it gives a very uh, tight, but relaxed at the same time. Uh, Great. So, it's, it's so I like that. Oh, thanks so much. That's really nice to hear that it's been, it's been a useful sort of um, space for you to work in. I think that's probably how I'd put it. Um, Nora, Nora, would you like to say anything? Because you've yeah, obviously contributed a lot to this. I, I, it was an enjoyable experience, I think. I didn't expect to get all this done. I think it was mm -hmm. like, at the beginning, I thought, well, four days to do all this. Are we really going to do that? But it was amazing. And the collaboration was really uh, interesting. I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Louise. And thank you for everyone and Mishka. And it was really great to see you all every day and, you know, get in touch and learn from each other. A great experience. Thank you very much oh. for that. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you for being a great contributor to the project. I mean, as far as next steps, what you've really got to do is we've got to put it into the book. So what we can probably do is work with you to sort of asynchronously move your work from the HackMD into GitHub. 
and then we can go through like a review process so that's something that we can do asynchronously probably Mishka and Denise can be the ones to coordinate that with you so that would be your next step there but yeah amazing work it's 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 really useful as well actually this is, oh yes and the collaboration cafes yes of we, course. <laughs> we have the which you've already been to I know um so we have the collaboration cafes twice a twice a month that you are very anyone's very welcome but you're especially welcome to come and um finish off this contribution so yeah wonderful work so let's give um uh, Louisa and Nora a, a round of applause for their amazing <laughs> contribution so that's great oh look, lots of applause well done and lots of appreciation in the chat as well because it's very impressive I find I find it really difficult to write during the book dash because there's so much going on so the focus that you've had has been really really great so uh, massive well done um brilliant so if you've got any questions for them please put that in the chat and we will move on swiftly to Malvika Can you hear me properly? Yes, we can hear you now. Yeah. Good. Um, so there are two things that I did, and they are historical things that I needed to fix. I've been successful in fixing one, but not two. So um, I want to release our book at least every six months, if not then nine to 12 months. Um, the last release, if you would look at, if you haven't really looked at it, um, we have a Synodal page where you can go and cite the book legend. It's uh, the authors are the Turingia community, including you. Uh, but if you look at it, the recent one is July 2022. Um, and the reason I cannot figure out, so this is a, a cry for help, honestly. So I have tried to publish things since uh, then as well, but um, it just doesn't appear. So, for example, if you would look at these are all from beyond uh, 2023. So the, this one I tried yesterday, uh, like we have a workflow defined, but in principle, once I publish this and we have everything up to date on our citation file, it should automatically appear on Zenodo, but it isn't happening. So that is definitely, someone would have to help me figure out why this is not happening. Um, Kirsty has full access to the Zenodo entry, so if the full access is needed, we can also figure that out. But on to actually more interesting thing. Um, a lot of time we go out and give talks about the Turing way, and when we talk about the Turing way, we don't really always get to go into the details of what chapter six is. We generally talk about why we're doing this work, why is it meaningful for us, how we're trying to build transparency in our community, who we want to work with, you know, what are our commitment and accountability. So we want to really operationalize that openness um, and make sure that not anything that we know as the project team are actually known to the community, even if it's difficult, even if it's hard in places where we don't have permission to tell the community, we should at least have reason for why we cannot tell. So we want to really operationalize that. Um, so we had tried to do that with the community handbook in the past. And of course, uh, you can see how we do things in terms of community. And the afterward has different information about, you know, sub projects that, that's happening and working groups. So if you haven't had a look, please do, because you will be soon listed in the contributors record. But it still doesn't cover the motivation for why this book was created and why we're doing this and what, what we as project leaders and team um, care about. So the new edition is this forward section and the forward section actually tries to address some of those questions. Um, we have created a background chapter and Anne is working on a history chapter which will be added in there. So I'm going to show you a little bit what it is and um, I would love for you to look at it and tell me where we can improve. So the background section should tell you why. So of course like academic system is flawed and we participate in crisis and uh, what we think what was the main um, origin story. And I've also highlighted one of the first impact story that was developed. We have a lot of reports now, which are all linked here. Then uh, book is overwhelming and we do tell people don't do not look at it uh, from beginning to the end, but we thought that it would still be useful to give people a better feel for what it is. Uh, how can you navigate so you can, for example, we had created this image to illustrate that 
but we uh, provide this now, like, you know, we have forward and afterward. But I also describe what are the areas and scope because the, the Turing way is not just a book, it's not a community only. Uh, it is combination of both and more because there are a lot of conversations that happen that you would never see in the book because, you know, the book dash experience, you cannot capture in a book. You can capture how you do the book dash itself. So we create, I created this area of work um, to try to capture, you know, the book element, but also grounding that with our community. And then also scope uh, as in like, it's a book, it's a community, but it's a place for you to be open leaders. Uh, show your domain expertise, establish partnership with us, um, and actually work on your own to build this global impact. Um, this is a beautiful chapter, and Kirsty uh, hasn't approved this. This is why I added a warning on the top, but I think people should be seeing this. Um, I think she hasn't approved this because she wrote it two years ago, but I think it's time for us to release it. Um, so she has always talked about emergent strategy. This is something that is a, a, a very known vocabulary within the team that we ground our values in emergent strategy. So if you don't know emergent strategy, you can read the full book, but you can just read this chapter and it should be okay. Um, and some of the things that we believe in is like small is good and small is out. Fixing a book is enough for us. Um, and joining this meeting is enough for us. Um, and then, you know, it's just beautiful chapter. Please have a look, but this is really, this is a good reflection of where Kirstie's leadership comes from. And um, I can, I can tell you that uh, it will really make you feel how we have integrated these practices in the Turing way. And then I come from community building background um, and I wrote my own take on what Turing way means to me and how I have tried to, uh, when I was building the community, now you all build the community, but what am I doing now? I'm really aligning the Turing way with digital commons uh, grounding ourselves in um, upholding human rights, uh, upholding access, um, and you can read a lot about that. Uh, I don't expect that you know everything, uh, and I can. Uh, my writing is always a bit complicated, so you can help me correct that. But this is directly taken from the talks that I give, so it was uh, not an invention. But what is very important for me is to actually talk about some things unspoken. We talk about equity, diversity, openness, in everything we do, we don't really create an EDI chapter. That's not our jam. We want EDI to be in everything. So this is where I try to uh, demonstrate how we are operationalizing this in our community and in our book. Yeah, so, and then this one is community roles. People also ask, what can I do? What, what authority do I have? So we try to explain some of these roles here in the context of the book, but beyond the book, what you can do. Uh, we have recently, in the last, not recently, we've always been working on governance, but over the last couple of years, we are really trying to solidify what governance we really want. And I understand that these conversations often do not happen so publicly, so we've written a chapter and we should have always done that. So in the last year and early this year, we adopted three-level decision-making, which is uh, described into community-level decision-making that you all do. There's a maintainer-level decision-making that the working group or any group that are organized within the Turing Way take, and constitutional-level decision-making, where, uh, where Percy and I and also uh, working group chairs are building accountability. But of course, these are still in the development. I have added a community forum link. And I've described what these each of them mean, uh, and I hope this will give you clarity on where else we can develop clarity. And then things like how to cite us and uh, frequently asked questions, uh, just signposting you to the right places. So uh, I'm waiting for Jesse to send me some comments, and once it's integrated, uh, you all can do that. You can still read it, but yeah, it's all good. Thanks so much, Marvika. That was like a wonderful tour through all the things you're doing at the moment. I hope I, I hope you haven't done that all this week. Otherwise, you would have been working 24 hours a day, I think. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so I can see we've had round of applause, but please give Marvika a round of applause. I did realise that, Marvika, you didn't actually introduce yourself at the beginning. So even though we all do know who you are and you just for the video, please do that. <laughs> Very arrogant. I assumed everybody knows me. I am Ali. No. I am a senior researcher at the Allen Turing Institute. I'm a co-lead for the Turing Way. I've been working in Turing Way since May 2019. Uh, first as a volunteer, then as a postdoctoral researcher, community manager, 
and now as a holy um, and I take my role very seriously. I I want to be as accountable, as open, as responsible as possible. I'm an Indian woman with unruly hair. I'm wearing a white shirt uh, and a green uh, kind of dress on top. That makes no sense. But I'm sitting in London office with uh, lots of people. It's been fantastic. Thank you. Thanks so much, Malvika. I didn't want to miss out your introduction. So um, brilliant. Um, if you've got any questions for Malvika, because that was like a tour de force of the full word of the Turing Way, which I have to say I haven't even read, uh, but I've heard some discussions on different bits of it. Um, do you put your um, uh, questions in the chat or go and read that first and then uh, send some Malvika some uh, messages in Slack, because that's a good way of getting in contact with all of us. But sounds amazing, um, all of the work that you've done. Um, so um, I'm trying to swiftly move on because we're running out of time and we've still got a few people left. So next uh, up is Zena. So hello, Zena. I think you're in the Turing as well. Uh, yes, I am <laughs> uh, 40 minutes uh, past the start of the Zoom call, but I was listening in, so I haven't missed anything. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I describe myself. I have a uh, brown unkempt hair, uh, brown eyes, a girl, uh, 25 years old, wearing a colorful uh, navy and green and white shirt. And I'm also at the cheering offices uh, with everyone here. Um, it was my first book dash, so I haven't done too much. I think a lot of it was just figuring out how the book dash works and how to contribute to the cheering way, but also not just with um, what I want to contribute, but contributing to other work that people have done. Um, so I got to like review uh, Vicky's chapter, uh, which was a great chapter to read. Um, I've also done my first pull request for a chapter on data missingness I'm working on along with the Turing Rush partnership. Um, the chapter itself is not ready, but I just wanted to create the pull request so that I can push any work I do and it's kind of updated and people can contribute. So um, my one ask would be uh, anyone that does want to contribute once I uh, manage to push the latest work, because uh, I'm having some trouble with that. <laughs> um, but please feel free to like, contribute uh, to the chapter I was going to show, sorry, the toolbar is in the way. Uh, I'm just going to do this. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done like an outline of the chapter, I figured out how to integrate it into the Turing way. Um, so this is like the landing page. It's nothing's complete, <laughs> but it's nice to have had this like week to, to get to do this and like figure out how to integrate stuff. Um, yeah, that's uh, kind of it. Uh, thank you, everyone, for the lovely experience. Uh, all, I think I'll apply to the next book dash because uh, I'll hopefully do a lot of work in the meantime, but uh, maybe publish the chapter on this week. Thanks so much, Sina. And you have done loads of stuff this week. I think you've underplayed what you've done. If you've written all that this week or even added it in by the uh, to the book into GitHub, that's a lot of work in itself. So it's an amazing contribution. And you've also done, you were mentioned earlier by Vicky because you just said you were reviewing that. And you also did some adding some images as well when we did our image -a-thon. So yeah, you've done loads this week. Um, so thanks so much for contributing. And please yeah. come and join us in the collaboration. Yeah, lots of clapping. Please um, come and join us in the collaboration cafe and you can work with us you know to finish off that chapter um because uh, that's great and we'd love to see you there um so yeah i see lots of rounds of applause already if you've got any questions for zina put them in the chat and uh we've got a couple of people left so next up is esther hello esther hello i'm esther i am glitching through the camera i think anyway uh, I'm a white woman uh, wearing very big headset things because I like those. And I'm in the team glasses, um, she, her. And I am one of the program committee members for this week. And I was there for mainly trying to get things organized. So I don't feel like I did a lot. 
Um, well, like Elena already mentioned, uh, we did discuss the next November book dash at, uh, in the Netherlands, which will be at Delft, and we already know because we've got some funding, so this will be uh, a lot smoother than this year, hopefully. Uh, and Malvika mentioned the picture, uh, so I'll share that. So this is a, a picture of us sitting in, at the Dutch Hub having lunch um, with uh, four people on the table with their plates still full. Um, and I mentioned one comment in the alt text that sparked some discussion. There's popcorn on the food. Um, but yeah, we, we enjoyed the food very much. It was a nice day. We were sitting outside. Um, and we, uh, Lena and myself, had lots of discussions about um, how would a Dutch hop look like, uh, the timing, etc. So we'll take those uh, discussions outside of the book dash. We haven't finalized those. I'll need to get back to the book dash uh, working group with some questions, etc. Uh, so that was my Monday. Uh, and then on Tuesday, I um, did a couple of small uh, PRs, um, basically adding some resources so that I had a feeling that I was doing something. <laughs> Uh, and one of them is on uh, how do you cite physical samples? If you use any physical materials in your research, how do you actually cite that? Which is very similar with data citation. Um, and if you want to know more, then there's a resource which explains it a bit in more detail, but it looks very much like data citation. Uh, and like Jim already uh, mentioned in his review, that's a shameless self-citing because I'm one of the authors in that, on that research. So thank you, Jim, for, for reviewing that. Um, and then what else did I do? I um, co-led a session on uh, cultural change. Uh, that was yesterday. We had an amazing discussion for about two hours long about cultural change. So we, we had some diehard people there. Uh, it was really nice. Uh, Ariel set it up very nicely. So most of the credits go to Ariel. Um, and Ariel and myself uh, created a new image for about cultural change. Uh, for uh, with this criteria artists, which is really nice. Um, and it's about building roads uh, with people. Um, but yeah, it, it would be nicer if we have the actual image. Uh, and I also did another image. And no, Ariel, don't bring up that we just have to rewrite the whole chapter slash add on to the existing chapter on cultural change. I want to end on, on a positive, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, we still have some writing to do. Uh, and there's a, there will also be a new image on uh, data repositories, and it will have scrolls. So it will be amazing. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and then uh, my ask comes really more uh, as an organizer. If you have any feedback, then please, please do fill out the feedback form. You can give positive feedback. You can give negative feedback. Just please, please give it. And that was me. Thank you so much, Esther. As always, you do, you've done a massive amount this week. And you didn't add in the hosting sessions, being at all the sessions and everything like that, and behind the scenes, organising us all, basically. So, yeah, a big round of applause for Esther and all her. Um, Esther leads the Book Dash working group, so is the chair of the working group. So big round of applause to Esther for all her hard work this week. Um. Thanks so much, Esther. And I'm looking forward to seeing the squirrel image because I haven't seen that yet. And I find that trees and squirrels are always good. Um, so um, I think we still got a few people or maybe it's one person. Ah, one person left. Um, so last but not least, Amafon, are you there? Yes, yes. Hello. Sorry, a bit uh, camera shy, but uh, I can speak. No problem. Okay. Go ahead. So yes, my, my name is Amifon. I'm from uh, the University of Tartu. Tartu is in Estonia, um, in the Baltic states. And um, during the book bash, I worked uh, mostly on uh, hybrid collaboration chapters. I, I hope I can share. Okay, yes. And um, I, I, I uh, have background in uh, studying hybrid events so hybrid hackathons mostly so I found this really interesting for me um, on this chapter I was able to read through um, review it really interesting chapter and added uh, two subsections on uh, scheduling and coordination as one of the challenges facing hybrid collaboration and another part uh, due to discussions that I had with um, 
uh, Liz and, and others with uh, respect to accessibility, um, uh, I also added a section about uh, the impacts um, hybrid collaboration has on accessibility as well. And uh, with the guidelines following on with that, uh, I also added some thoughts on accessibility when you are uh, organizing a hybrid conference. And uh, I, I just uh, went down uh, reading and exploring as well because it was a new uh, aspect for me uh, dealing with accessibility and uh, hybrid collaboration as well. So it was interesting for me to look into and also contribute as well. Um, there were some other uh, reviews uh, in here somewhere, but there was just a lot of work already done here. So uh, it was just nice to read through and just see what I can uh, contribute to it as well. Uh, I added just uh, one last resource on holding uh, accessible hybrid meetings. This is from a uh, standard uh, for uh, accessibility. And uh, I, I thought it was really just interesting to just add uh, in here as well as a resource. Uh, so yes, um, that's, that's uh, it from me. Um, I think generally I would welcome any uh, ideas or uh, any interest that anyone has uh, else on hybrid collaboration. I'm still willing to collaborate on this. It is a field that I'm really interested in and I would like to continue on. Thanks. Wonderful. Thanks, Amazon. That's really great. Again, another really great um, contribution of updating and adding on to other people's chapters, which we really love in the Turing way. There's nothing we do is finished. It all needs updating and continually adding to. So amazing. Thank you so much for doing that. And yeah, hybrid events are really tricky to put on. So the more we can help people, the better with that. It'd be wonderful. Great. So I think um, everybody deserves another round of applause because, again, it looks to me like we've done loads this week. And it's gone so quickly, which is really sad, but we've done so much and we should all be super proud. So let's give us all a big round of applause so that we all get a big round, another round of applause. Um, I've also got um, the other thing that happens during the book dash is that we actually um, make uh, some new illustrations. So a couple of people like Esther just talked about her tree and squirrel um, uh, illustration. Sorry, my brain is gone now. Um, so, <laughs> so I'm just going to uh, have a quick look in the folder. I'm going to do this not sharing just to make sure that I can actually access the folder. If not, you might have to wait for the second share out. So we'll see if I can actually access the folder. Oh, no, I can. So it might be a bit of potluck um, whether we get... Oh, thanks, Mavika, you sent me the link there. So I'm just going to... Ah, so they are they are very drafty sketches by the look. So they're not coloured or anything like that. But um, I think it would be quite nice just to have a quick... We've got some time. Have a quick look at some of them. So I'll share my screen here. Um, and they haven't got any labels on. So if it's your illustration you'll have to shout out because I I don't know what they are. Unless Mavika, do you know what each of them are? Might you be better to share them? You don't know either. Okay, so it's a bit of potluck um, with this. So I'll just share my screen. So we've got this one. Is that anybody's image? Oh, go for it then. So um, I don't know where Ali is, but Ali and I worked together last year in the Practitioner's Hub. And one of the things that was outcome from the Practitioner's Hub was case studies. And we tried how can we build collaborative case studies. We didn't want our technical writer to just write everything. We wanted agency uh, with people who are working with us to go back and work with their community. So we came up with um, some roles, um, which is which is something that we will label later on. But what you see in the beginning on the left side, uh, that there are there is a technical writer that we hire. It could be someone internally or bring from outside. And there's an idea person, and this idea person would explain what they want to do, what their initial idea is. And then they will connect this person, this technical writer, to some members in the community who will be interviewed. And the technical writer will synthesize some ideas from those interviews and provide a first draft. And then uh, after that draft has been received, it will go out for different people to look at it and review it. And then at the end, what you see, everyone approves it. And then it goes out on Zenodo and everyone can read it. In the bottom, you see two people. It's basically 
one is me and Ale, one person together, and then <laughs> another person is uh, we created a role called liaison. We thought, how can we bring other people who are not Ale and I to actually be part of this process, and then they can author it, they can actually inform the structure. Ariel and Ricky were two liaison, and we had one PhD enrichment student, Lucy Killeron, and they did a fantastic job. They were so crucial for making sure that they were the point contact of the idea person and the technical writer, and then they could tell us if there's something that was needed or things weren't going right, or, you know, they, they were just absolutely brilliant in what they did. Um, and we want to now put this framework forward to be used by the entire BJI community, and Ali is actually drafting something um, in the Turing way. So anybody who would like to use this framework can use it. Thanks so much, Marvika. That's a really good explanation because we wouldn't have got that from this draft, but I can definitely see the process now. I'm trying to see if, because the technical writer we work with is Stuart, I'm trying to see if one is meant to look like Stuart, but I don't think so. <laughs> um, right, let's go. Ah, uh, oh, so this must be Vicky. Um, let's go to see. Oh, oh, hold on. So this is Vicky for your um, scholar scheme. Yeah, I've got chapter. two. Oh, we'll try and skip through. Second. Yeah. We'll skip through a bit. I don't know if you can this find is, one. Well, let's just pause on this one. This <laughs> is the this is the squirrel one. So this looks brilliant. Um, I love it. You can see this one more, the tree, these little pie charts. Are they meant to be pie charts or data? Let's see. Oh, data. Okay. Bits of data. Oh yeah, the squirrel is flying down on the data. I love it. <laughs> Can't wait to see this one. I can still um anyone's this one? I think that's a no. I think we'll keep going. Shout out if any of these are yours. I asked for this one, actually. <clears throat> I've been uh, looking at like uh, alternative ways of communicating and uh, engaging the public in uh, research. So like uh, through different artistic media, like uh, from uh, photography to um, arts, in like visual arts, like and also theater performances and so on. So the idea was basically to navigate the research landscape uh, through visual arts uh, or other kind of arts. Right. I love this. I do actually hear about this being that art artists being used a lot more in research projects. So I think this is really, really relevant to what's going on in quite a lot of areas. It's lovely as well. I think it's going to look really beautiful. Thanks so much, Julia. Um, this one, who is, who is this one? Okay, so that is me. Uh, it's uh, it's about uh, open source development guides, uh, and I wanted to reuse this in one of my talks. So I also asked them to include the R logo. Uh, so basically, it's uh, what the guide does is it would help even beginner, intermediate, or seasoned programmers uh, to contribute to the open source R project. Uh, so it's kind of an inclusive guide, you know, irrespective of where the person is in their experience level, if it's if they're seasoned, so like they could like build the whole city out of it, uh, or if they are someone beginner, then there are the ways to get them involved as well. Uh, and then somewhere intermediate, like they're sitting on the crane and like developing, developing the source code, something like that. So that was the idea. That's lovely. Thanks so much. I really like that. Uh, this next one. No, I'll skip on. No one's shouting out. This looks like an educators one because it says educators, accessible learning. I know Mishka's on the call. Is this one of yours, Mishka or Denise? I don't think so. Ah. Unless I can't remember. Yeah, it is ours. <laughs> it is ours, so yeah. Ah, is it? It's from the educators, right. yeah. Brilliant. Does anyone want to describe what they were trying to do? Um, so it's primarily um, trying to tell educators how they should create accessible learning data science materials and curriculum that is inclusive for everybody and, you know, not looking at things in a stereotypical manner. So, you know, uh, you don't have to use you could use various learning materials and so on. It doesn't have to be a typical, you know, a sermon style lecture, but you could mm. uh, blend in lots of learning styles and teach people what how to 
engage with your audience or your learners. Right. I love that. That's going to be really lovely as well. Really usable image, I think, as well. Brilliant. Let's just do one more and then we'll we'll have to go to wrapping up. So this looks like another educator one. Just from this someone wearing it there. It's me. Oh, is it? Oh, is it a scholar's one? Yeah. Oh, it's lovely. Well, this one's the ambassador one, not branded. Um, I found it quite tricky to do. I was kind of trying to... So we've got like someone helping out the organisation and what they're contributing and how they're kind of spreading the word. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, think it I love it. More sense when it's a bit yeah. more Yeah, I can see it now. Well, it definitely looks like a scholar in the middle. Exactly. So, yeah, brilliant. Right, I'm going to stop sharing because then I can leave some not seen for the later session. I think that might be a good idea so we can share different ones. Um. So that's great um so i think um all i actually need to do now is say some thank yous and to promote our feedback form which i'm going to put in the chat so everybody that has um joined the book dash this week um thank you so much really for coming and being amazing community members and contributing to the turing way um we would love for you to give us feedback of your experience we've already heard some really great positive experience there are also things that didn't go great so please tell us about those um we actually use this we do go over this feedback we've actually got a meeting next week with the planning committee to actually go through this and give our side of the feedback and to go through this feedback as well so this isn't just a tick box exercise we actually do read everything that you write in our feedback forms and we actually then the book dash um, working group then integrates this feedback uh, into the next book dash, which for us will be in November, um, just to put that out there. So please do today, please try and um, put some feedback on the feedback form that I've shared. Um, if you have a look at the end of our pad, um, we have a long list of thank yous. Um, I've done the first one, which is thank you to everyone that is here, everyone that has contributed this week. It's really been a really um, high energy kind of getting stuff done, really productive week, which is really, really great. Um, also, thank you to everybody on the Book Dash Planning Committee and also everyone on our operational side. So Aoife and, and Ale, uh, also Malvika, because you've really um, helped us as well this week. Thank you so much. Um, oh, Richard obviously got kicked out. He's coming back. Um, thank you all uh, for your support, but also on our planning committee, Ariel, Denise, myself, Esther, Liz, Mishka, um, Carlos, Winnie, Emmanuel and Johanna helped us with um, the planning. Uh, Johanna was helping us with the GitHub session, um, but also a special thanks to Mishka and Denise, who this is their first book dash. But they were very brave to say to us that they wanted to bring their community of educators into the Turing way so thank you so much for doing that because it's been amazing um and you're quite the people you've brought in so thank you to all the educator group that have contributed we've see, already seen some amazing work that they've done this week so thank you so much for doing that um and yeah if, it's been really really great to have um an extra an extra side an extra community kind of joining us so and um especially to Denise and Mishka you've taken on so much You've been here all the time. You've hosted lots of sessions. So thank you so much for being so supportive and on the planning committee. Um, and also um, I've put there also thanks to our co-leads, Kirsty, who's been around this week and Malvika for supporting us in the, the Book Dash um, and supporting the Turing Way project all the time. So um, I'm just going to pause and say thanks very much to everybody. We do have a second share out session. You're very welcome to come to that. It's at five o'clock today. The other thing to advertise is that we have a fireside chat, which is on at three o'clock. Hopefully I've got that right. Yeah, for an hour and a half. Good. Um, and that's on the same, they're all on this, this same Zoom link. So now that you've got this Zoom link, I know there was a bit of problems registering to start off with, with Zoom, but you've got it now. So you can come into the fireside chat at three, come to the other share out session, which just starts at five o'clock today, five o'clock UK time. Um, and that's going to be hosted by Ariel. Hopefully I've got that right. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for coming. Uh, do tell me if I've forgotten to say something though, Malvika or Esther or others, or anyone wants to also say thank you. Uh, I want to personally thank you 
thank you, Emma, for sharing this. Perfect on time, so I want to keep that on. Thank you. The entire, entire Book Dash committee, this has been a really tough time for the team members without going in details. Um, so you all, you all have done such a huge favor by holding this space for all of us and be loved and cared for. This is one of the kindest community I'm part of and mm -hmm. it's the reason why I do what I do uh, despite the heart. So thank you so much. Thank you. So yeah, thanks very much. And yeah, one minute under. Good timing by me. It's not my best trait, I have to say, at facilitating. So I've done a good job. Um, thank you all for supporting me. Um, and see you later. Enjoy your lunch. Bye.